Well, good morning, everyone. We welcome you to worship uh, today on this special Sunday. This is All Saints Sunday, a day um, that we remember our loved ones who have gone before us into the kingdom, um, all of the saints of God, and so we celebrate them today. Uh, we welcome you if you are joining us online this morning. I'm glad to have you with us, too. Uh, later in the service, we will uh, light candles. We'll invite all of you to light candles in memory of um, your loved ones. And we also invited our online congregation to send in names of, uh, of people. And Todd and I will read those names off also and, and light candles for them. So um, that is part of our All Saints worship today. Um, we've got some announcements as usual, so here we go. I'm going to get trucking on those. Um, first of all, we want to thank everybody who um, was a part of our silent auction, either those who were watching and bidding online or people who donated items for the silent auction. Um, we had more fun than we thought we possibly could, didn't we? <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Maybe a little too much fun. but. Um, it exceeded our expectations, not only in how much fun we had, but also in how much money was raised um, by far. We were just shy of $3,000, and we thought maybe we would make 500, so it was really fun. Yeah, had a good time. So a big thank you to everybody who um, participated in the silent auction. Um, then we want, uh, want you to save with the date for our Ludafis dinner. Um, we are not going to be able to do our regular kind of Ludafis dinner where you come in here, but we're doing a takeout Ludafis dinner. Um, that is going to be Saturday, November 21st. And there will be two options we've mentioned before, one with Ludafis and one without this year. So that's kind of a nice little option you have for those of us who don't necessarily love Ludafis. And so without Ludafis, it's um, uh, less expensive, so we'll have two price options, but um, um, both of the options have all the fixings with it. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We are in need of volunteers for that. So if you would be able to help in any way on Saturday, uh, November 21st, um, we have all kinds of ways that you can help. We'll be wearing masks and socially distancing here in the church as we get that uh, meal ready for people to drive up and, and take out. So if you can help, just go to our church website. Um, right on the front, there is a spot where you can um, volunteer to help out with that. So a big thanks in advance. For, for your help with that. We want to thank everybody who has um, been sending in pictures for our Philippians project. Look at this wall, huh? It's, it's getting bigger and bigger. And these are pictures that you all are sending in of uh, just the beautiful, life-giving um, things of God that you are seeing. Where is God alive in the world today? Um, there's so much hard things and difficult and challenging things that are going on in our world today. But Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, calls us to um, set our eyes on, on God and on the things of God. And so we thank you for sending in pictures, so many fun pictures. Um, come up sometime after church if you want, socially distance, and, and get a closer look at some of those pictures. But there's some fun ones. I especially like this one little baby's foot right behind me so beautiful so keep those pictures coming and we'll just keep expanding our food shelf is serving uh, more and more people um, all the time the the need is growing in our community and and we're so blessed and fortunate to be able to be uh, a place where people can come and receive food that they need. Um, we're the only food shelf uh, in this area. The other closest one is in South St. Cloud um, at Catholic Charities. And so thank you um, to all of you who have donated money or food items to the food shelf. Um, and just keep that need before you. If you uh, have an extra $5 once in a while or think of grabbing some food out of your cupboards, um, we can always use it here because we're going through it very, very rapidly. So thank you. Uh, for your help with that. And then finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to um, participate in a book discussion of My Grandmother's Hands, um, our Racial Justice Task Force um, has, has this book discussion group going. And um, you will get a Zoom link later today if you would like to participate in the conversation. Even if you haven't read the book yet, it would still be valuable to be a part of the conversation. Warren Christie is leading that. Um, that's at 6.30 tonight on Zoom. Or if you want to come to the church and be in person, socially distanced, wearing masks, you can come at 11 on Wednesday morning, and there's, uh, the discussion continues then. So we welcome you to be a part of that. Well, I want to thank everybody who's uh, helping with worship today. We've got uh, Tim and Brenda Wright faithfully helping us uh, get live streaming and all of that. And we've got Patty doing that. Um, we thank you to... 
All right, our, our brass people, they're, not, they're doing a double header. They were here last week for Reformation Sunday, both services, and now um, they are here two services today for All Saints. You've got to have brass on Reformation, and you've got to have brass on All Saints, and it's two Sundays in a row. Really, they're doing a quadruple header because they've been here four services. And we're so appreciative. You notice many of them are high school students. And I don't know about the high school students in your lives, but mine don't want to get up and be at a church by 730. But these guys have been doing it now two Sundays in a row. And we're really appreciative of the whole group of them. Um, Janet Anderson is playing. And we've got our worship team, Lori Dingman and, and Wayne Anderson and um, the whole crew here. So um, let's give them a big thanks. <laughs> And then I wanted to mention, um, just found out this morning that um, Dave Mossman passed away. Um, he's a grandparent of the baby who was baptized this last um, Sunday here at church, and we have been praying for him. Um, and so just ask that you would keep that family um, in your love, hold them in your prayers before God um, as they go through this um, really difficult time. So with that, um, I'm going to invite, invite us to join together now in our opening hymn. Um, this is an old classic for All Saints Day. We're singing all the saints kinds of songs this morning. So if you would like to sing under your face mask, we invite you to do that. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And so with you. Let us enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the one God, the sower, the seed, and the harvest, our lifeboat, our treasure, our leaven. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. 
God of heaven and earth, we name before you the sin that enslaves us, the sin that wounds us and others, the sin that scars our world. Forgive us and heal us. Guard us from all evil. Give to us and the whole creation the freedom of the children of God. Amen. Take a moment for your own time of confession and reflection. Now hear this good news. There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents. By the grace of God in Christ Jesus, who gave himself up for us all, your sins are forgiven, and you are made free. Rejoice with one another. We are home in God's mercy now and forever. Amen. Remembering that in baptism, we are made children of God marked with the cross of Christ forever and set free to love one another. Please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. We continue singing our uh, song of praise. read Psalm 34 responsively. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer and hunger, but those who seek the Lord get no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. A reading from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet be revealed. What we, do not, what we know is this. 
when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Mara. All right, it's time for the children's message, and it just, I'll never be able to adjust to not having the kids come up here because the kids make the children's sermon, but uh, we'll give it a go. So we had a big holiday last night, right? What was yesterday? There we go, Halloween. Okay, raise your hand, and this can include adults. Who wore a costume last night, anyone? Yes? Okay, give, give a shout. What were you wearing? What were you, Mara? Cowgirl. Cowgirl, awesome. How about you? What was it? Oh, Queen of Hearts? Something like that. Okay, like the video game. Thank you. How about you? I, I should never ask a question because I'm half deaf. What's that? A wolf. A wolf, thank you. Yeah, I need an interpreter. A wolf. Oh, I would like to have seen that. How about you back there? Elsa. Elsa. Oh, how fun from Frozen. Boy, that is fun. We saw a lot of good... What were you? A unicorn princess. Wow, that had to be quite a costume. That is fun. We had a costume at our house uh, last night, and that was our dog Paisley. She was a mermaid, and that was a big hit for everyone. So there you go. Well, you know what? It's not very often you have Halloween, like the day before church. So we got to have a little, a little Halloween parade. So I uh, prevailed upon um, the, this crew over here to come on up. We're going to have just a little bit of a uh, runway Halloween costume style show parade. And they, I am bribing them with a piece of candy. So here you go. We're going to have uh, Pastor Todd give it a start. Come on up. Yeah, your hair is going to pot, but you'll have to cope. Okay, I want to see some moves now. The first service, you guys were just warming up. Let's see the moves. I spin well. You spin well. Very good. Okay, yep. Mm-hmm. Next one. Okay, slow. This guy's up. Yep, let's see a move. <laughs> nice. Woo, very good. Okay, next one. Here you go. A little move. Ooh, she's... <laughs> Yep, very good. Woo! Very scary. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Woo! <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, lovely, lovely. Very good. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> A very special look <laughs> for Wayne. Nice, Wayne. Woo! <laughs> yes, the bat. Lori the Bat. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Yes. Don't forget your candy. Take your trick-or-treat candy. I filled it for you. <laughs> With Frankenstein there for you. Very good. Weren't they awesome? Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Now what I want to ask you, Todd, you forgot your Starburst. You can have the bowl afterwards. Okay. Now we've got to talk about what does Halloween mean? Anybody know, like, the word, the words Halloween... What does that mean? Anybody have a, anybody know? You might. What do you think? Isn't it something to do with like when the angels carry around the full dress and carry around the spirit of the way that keeps the spirits around? That is what you're exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it, people wore costumes and masks to try and keep the evil spirits away. It was kind of, yes, it was a scary kind of night. Um, and the words themselves mean hallow, een, which is hallow, eve. So just like Christmas Eve comes before Christmas Day, hallow, eve comes before All Hallows Day, which is today, right? So uh, Halloween was hallow, eve, and now we're on All Hallows Day. And so you got to ask, what's a hallow? What in the world is a hallow? And that's from the Old English. And it comes from, like when we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That word is holy. And so a hallow is a holy person, right? Or a saint. And so today is All Hallows Day or All Saints Day. So that's kind of the connection between Halloween and All Saints Day today. So we're celebrating all of the hallows today, the saints. And the next question I have is, 
how does a person become a saint? And different religious traditions would answer that question in a different way. But I want to um, talk about how Lutherans understand that question. So how do we become a saint? And I'm going to give a little hint here. And I'm going to go right back to this big bowl of water back here. And what would that be? What's this, what's this, this uh, bowl of water? There, yes, now I heard it, the baptism font, that's right. And sometimes when we're um, teaching kids about baptism, we call this God's bathtub, because this is where God washes us clean, and it's, it reminds us that God forgives us all of our sins. And with Halloween, you gotta wear a costume and dress up, but when you come to God in baptism, you come just exactly as you are, no costume, because God loves you absolutely exactly as you are and he washes you clean and forgives you all of your sins and that is what makes you a hallow or a holy person a saint it's not anything that we do but it's everything that god does for us in jesus on the cross so that makes us all hallows we're all saints and so i'm gonna um, bring this candle up here because when we are baptized and become a saint or a hallow we light this candle and that reminds us that we are a part of um, God's family and that we are saints. And we always light it from the big Christ candle in baptism. And so I'm going to do that right now. And we're going to put that right up here so that later on today, when we, bring, um, when we light candles and put them here, remembering the saints who have gone into heaven before us, we remember that our baptism connects us to them, that we are saints here on the earth because of Jesus washing us clean, and that we are remembering our loved ones who are saints in heaven, and that we're connected all together by Jesus on the cross, and we are reminded of that in our baptism. So let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for making each one of us saints. We thank you that you love and care for us and accept us just exactly as we are. We don't have to wear a costume for you, even though it's fun to wear costumes. We come just as we are to you. And we are saints and we are made holy by you. We thank you for all of those who we love who have gone into heaven to be with you forever. We thank you that you've made them a saint and that we will be united with them, that we'll be together again one day. Um, and we just thank and praise you for that. So. We remember our loved ones today on this All Saints Day, and we remember your great love for us. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. All right, awesome. Well, we're going to join together now in singing our gospel acclamation, and we'll sing that through twice. gospel today is from John the 11th chapter when Mary finally found Jesus outside the village she fell at his feet in tears and said Lord if only you had been here my brother would not have died when Jesus looked at Mary and saw her weeping at his feet and all her friends who were with her grieving he shuddered with emotion and was deeply moved with tenderness and compassion and he said to them where did you bury him Lord, come with us and we'll show you, they replied. Then tears streamed down Jesus' face. Seeing Jesus weep caused many of the mourners to say, look how much he loved Lazarus. Yet others said, isn't this the one who opens blind eyes? Why didn't he do something to keep Lazarus from dying? 
Then Jesus, with intense emotions, came to the tomb, a cave with a stone placed over its entrance. Jesus told them, roll away the stone. Then Martha said, but Lord, it's been four days since he died. By now his body's already decomposing. Jesus looked at her and he said, didn't I tell you that if you will believe in me, you will see God unveil his power. So they rolled away the heavy stone. Jesus gazed into heaven and said, Father, thank you that you have heard my prayer, for you listen to every word I speak. Now, so that, the, so that these who stand here with me will believe that you have sent me to the earth as your messenger, I will use the power you've given me. Then with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. And then in front of everyone, Lazarus, who had died four days earlier, slowly hobbled out. He still had grave clothes tightly wrapped around his hands and feet and covering his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him loose. Here ends the reading of the gospel. God's beloved people, grace to you and peace from God the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns in us and in our world. Amen. Well, on this All Saints Sunday, I wanted to read you that particular gospel uh, because it's the one that contains the shortest verse in the whole Bible, Jesus wept. Because for me, this one little verse really says it all. It reveals everything we need to know about God. Jesus wept. He already knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He already knew their mourning would soon turn to dancing and their sadness to joy. He knew that Lazarus was in the Father's good hands and that all would be well. And yet, he stood on that road outside of town waiting for Mary. And when she found him and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. He didn't say to her, it's okay, Mary. Everything's going to be fine. Lazarus is in a better place now. And he didn't say, it's okay, Mary. God needed Lazarus more than you did. That's why God had to take him from you. And he didn't say, Mary, this is all part of God's perfect plan. We just don't understand it yet. Or, Mary, God needed another angel in heaven. And he did not say, like in the movie God's Not Dead, I think it was, your loved one needed to die so that his death could bring someone else to faith. He didn't say any of those things that we so often hear when someone we love dies. In fact, the Greek word used here to describe Jesus' response to Mary can mean that he shuddered with emotion, but it can also mean that he was indignant and stirred with anger. Think of that. The Son of God was furious. We don't know if he was angry at God or at the devil, but he was filled with anger that Lazarus had been taken from them. And underneath that anger, there was a deeper emotion still. It says that as they led Jesus to the place where Lazarus was buried, tears streamed down his face. He knew the unspeakable, indescribable, bottomless pain of grief and loss. So if you've ever cried out at night in the depths of your being and didn't know how you were going to go on without this person in your life, or if you have raged at this loss you had absolutely no control over and no choice in the matter at all. Or if you've stood in the living room in the middle of the day with tears streaming down your face because it suddenly hit you all over again. Jesus wept too and tears streamed down his face. And when the people saw this they said to each other, look how much he loved Lazarus. Put your person's name in that space. Look how much he loved John. Look how much he loved Denny. Look how much he loved Gordy, Tanner, Holly, Ethelyn. Look how much he loved Jim, Joyce, Elmer. Put your loved one's name there in that space because that is the deepest truth of their entire being. They were so loved by God. God did not need another angel in heaven so he could make his heavenly host complete. As if the creator of the entire universe would have to take your loved ones so that he could have one more singer in his choir. Neither did God need your loved one more than you did. As if God were some kind of cruel narcissist who chose his happiness over yours. 
we so often reduce God to our own small and petty dimensions. God didn't need your loved one in order for his work to be done in heaven. God's work was already done when Jesus cried out from the cross, it is finished. He didn't take your loved one in order to bring someone else to faith, as if your loved one were just another cosmic chess piece. The very hairs on her head were numbered. The Lord's care for her was intimate and tender. He left the 99 just to find her. And it was not God, part of God's plan that your loved one should die. Death is never part of God's plan. God is the Lord of life, not death. He came to save, not to condemn. He came that we might have life and life abundant. Your loved one's death was never part of God's plan. That's why God himself came to suffer death in order to overcome it. Jesus wept. That is the heart of the gospel. See how he loved Lazarus. See how he loved your loved one. See how he loves you. He weeps for you and with you. He's moved to the core with compassion and tenderness for you. He's filled with anger that your loved one died because your loved one was his loved one too. His divinity did not separate him from us. He emptied himself of his divinity to walk this aching world with us. There's nothing in the whole creation that can separate us from his love. That's what I want us to remember today on this All Saints Sunday, that we are utterly held by love, that we stand in his love, that his love is the ground and source of our being, both in life and in death, and that his love triumphs still over sin and death and the grave forever, forever. See how he loves us. Well, I want to invite you now just to, to listen to um, the song In Christ Alone, one of the most beautiful songs, I, I think. Let those words that you hear remind you again of the ever-reaching, all-encompassing love of God for you and for all those who have gone before you to be with him in his kingdom forever. Amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand in christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the Lamb of God was glorified. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his. And he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. 
No gift in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man will ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stay. At this time, oh, my mic is too loud here. At this time, we will enter into um, uh, what we do annually on this All Saints Sunday, where we invite you to come forward and light a candle uh, in memory of those loved ones who have passed on um, with our socially distanced <laughs> factors. Uh, we would ask you to just kind of go pod by pod and, and uh, not line up to do it like we usually do. Um, and also, as you light your candle, then if you could place it near the back of the box, that would be great because then no one's reaching over any flames. So while you come forward, uh, group by group, to light candles, uh, we will be singing together, Morning Cry.
and now um, Todd and I will read the names uh, from our online community and um, light candles in memory of them also. Tanner Foles. Holly Ruddinkin. Ethelyn Gadley. Dennis Davos. Joyce and Elmer Treefeven. The grandparents of Sue and Jeff Fossum, Sid and Rita, Dude and Josephine, Robert and Virginia, William and Emma, as well as Jeff Fossum's mother, Terry. Robert Notch and Sandy Thurm. John Keenig, Beverly Cook, and Bonnie Satry. Jean Salk. Art and Darlene Tarnowski. Chris Nelson. Leo and Caroline Winicky. The deceased members of the Sirocco and Ditlevson families. Bert Howe and Jim Gold. Sue Thering and Tracy Sperling. April Myers, Gordon Myers, and Kathy Schleip. Don Peterson. Bill and Helen Rasmussen. Nancy Kitchener, John Greenwald Jr., Martha, and Allie. Mildred Gans. Zachary Ian Helgerson, Taylor Jean Zebel, Shirley Elstrom, Bonnie and Orlando Helgerson. Ray and John Crandall. Orville Schmieding and siblings, Robert Szymanski. John Lund. Don Rensenbrink, Jerry Iverson, Jim Gorder. Amanda. Norma Bergeson, Glenn and Sylvia Gunderson. Jaron Connor. Susan Schumer. The aunts, uncles, and grandparents of Michelle Berkovich. Bev Pop, Diane Cater. Mary Grace McDowell. Danny Reiner. Dave Massman. We praise you, O oh God, for the faith and witness of those members of our congregation who have died, Denny Stavos, John Lund, and those who we name silently in our hearts. We thank you for Jesus who bore our sins upon the cross and brought us from death into life. May God, May God preserve, preserve their memory. Their memory. Comfort their families and grant us grace as we seek to live our lives to God's glory. In the depths of grief and our sorrow, God brings us a deep and real peace, and that we offer to one another. 
And so may God's peace be with you always. Take a moment, share God's peace as best you can in a socially distanced way with those around you. It is also fitting that we move from, from remembering those loved ones in this way to celebrating this meal where we are joined together, uh, saints here on earth with saints in heaven, uh, all gathered around the table of our Lord, where we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping here in person, I invite you to take the little communion kit you received and just peel back the very first layer so that you have the wafer and then take that wafer and hold it in your hand. This is the body of Christ that has been given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The gifts of God for the people of God.
receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you into eternal life. Be now at peace. Amen. And as you go on your way, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, sing out a, a kind of a fun little song, Oh, Win the Saints. Uh, the brass are going to play the very first verse, and then please join in.